What's up guys, Jeremy here with the Hockey Movement with special guest star Jim Vitale from Vital Hockey Skills. He's been coaching 20 plus years, running hockey camps in Toronto for 20 plus years. He has put a lot of thought into what he teaches and how he teaches it. And we're going to get some of that knowledge on tape today. Jim, can you give me a little uh, background on where you've coached? I coached York University for a couple of years as an assistant. Coached a little bit in the Ontario Junior League and had about 20 plus years of experience coaching at the AAA level uh, in the GTHL. So Jim, you recently took your team to the OHL Cup and had nine players from that team drafted. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's something that takes, takes a bit of time to do. It took us about seven years in the age group to kind of weed out and get to the right players to form that kind of dressing room to get to that level of success. We didn't win. Uh, tragic loss with nine seconds left, but uh, we're really proud of the boys and the fact that we were able to get nine of the 16 players drafted, four in the top uh, top few rounds, which is a big milestone for the organization. Absolutely. And we're really proud. In this video, I think we want to look at turning. Yep. Um, there's, a, again, a lot of different philosophies. Uh, none of the other videos are wrong. I really believe in extreme edges on a turn. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a fine line between the efficiency of that, whether it's going to slow you down to a, a halt or whether it's going to allow you just to get in the ice enough to make you strong on your skates while still accelerating out of a turn. And that's kind of some of the things I want to wrap up in this video. It's going to be great. And, and the great thing about hockey is that it's so dynamic. There's so many different situations you can find yourself in. So as a coach, I like to push, like, try everything, right? Any, anything that somebody is trying to teach you, you take that on the ice and you give it your all and you find where you can work that into your game. Just by constantly challenging yourself, you can really improve your skills. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to teach and how these guys can take it and drop it into their game. So uh, you might be wondering, how are we going to teach skating in Jim's basement? Well, we got synthetic ice from HockeyShot.com. So Jim's going to be teaching you guys on synthetic ice, but obviously you can take that, drop it right into your game, and try it out on the ice. So uh, I'm excited to see what you have to teach. Let's do it. Let's go. So let's have a look at turning. The point of turning is to go from a straight line onto a curve at some point in the game. The aggressiveness, the intensity that you need to do that depends on what's happening on the ice and where you are. Is somebody chasing you? Are you deep in the corner? Are you just turning in the neutral zone to try to pick up a man on the back check? All these are different intensities and degrees of knee bend that you need, but we're just going to cover the general idea of going from a straight line onto a curved path. And one of your biggest enemies is called inertia. And inertia is a mass's resistance to changing direction. Ever be in a car, in the back seat of a car, when your parents are turning and you happen to go face plant up against the far door? Well, that's inertia. Your body is going straight. When the car changes motion, your body, your mass, resists changing with the car, and you end up going straight. It seems like you're going up against the door, but it's the car that's actually turning into you while you continue to go straight. A little bit hard to understand, but as you're turning in hockey, there's going to be a slight moment where your body, your mass, wants to continue going the way it was, and it's going to want to resist going in the direction your brain is telling it to. That's called inertia. And in that moment of inertia, a good athlete is able to minimize it so that it almost doesn't exist. Because the longer that exists, the more you are actually fighting your own body to try to get to where you're going. So you end up with upper skeleton versus lower skeleton, causing all kinds of torsion forces on your spinal cord that are gonna make you inefficient, clumsy, and really staple you to the ice for no reason. So the first thing you want to do to have a great turn and make sure that you go in the direction you want to go and not continue going straight is a drop in your weight. So if you have a knee bend probably like this as you're going to the turn, you want to suddenly drop your weight. Dropping your center of gravity actually causes you to plug into gravity for a little bit and it'll make you accelerate around the turn. So if you're staying straight up and down going around the turn, you're gonna have to wait for the turn to happen to you instead of you creating the turn. So you need to take control of that turn, take control of making that turn right from the beginning by dropping your weight into the turn. When you do that, you're pulled down into the ice and if you're on a curve, you'll automatically be plugged into the centrifugal force, which is the force of gravity pulling you around on a curve. The second thing you want to do is make sure that at the same time as dropping your weight, you're going to be shifting into an outside edge of the inside leg. Repeat after me. Outside edge of the inside leg. Say that 10 times fast. Get it up there. 
So you're going to be dropping your weight. And if we are turning to the left, okay, I'm turning on my backhand side. Here's what it looks like. One, two, three, I'm dropping the weight and turning my foot at the same time. So watch it again. One, two, three, drop and turn. Drop and turn right there. We look at it from a different angle. I got two hands on my stick. My head is up and drop and turn the outside edge. That makes sure that you're steering. Sometimes players will drop, which is great, but they leave their foot straight. And when they're doing that, they're dropping and leaving their foot straight. They want to go on a curve, but their edge is not lined up to steer in that direction. And again, you end up in a situation where you've put your body into the curve, but your skate is resisting it, causing your body to fight itself for no reason at all. The third thing you want to do, once you've dropped your weight, once you've access that outside edge of the inside leg is make sure you scissor out your outside leg. Now you're probably like, why would I want to do that? Well, I'll tell you, if you look at an ice cream cone and you got the wide part in your hands and you place it on a table, what's going to happen when you let go of the ice cream cone? I know, brilliant, right? It's going to fall over. Well, it's going to fall over because the top part is wider than the point at the bottom. I mean, if you turn that ice cream cone over, it won't fall because the wider part is on the bottom. As graceful as you might be practicing edge work, you got to realize that in a game, there's usually somebody on the inside of your turn that you need to lean on. So practicing a turn, dropping your weight, getting on your outside edge, but keeping your feet close together makes you like the ice cream cone with the tip touching the table. It makes you wobbly. Your feet are too close together, and even though you got a great outside edge, your shoulders are still a lot bigger than your feet, which is gonna make you very easy to knock off the puck, and there's no purpose having a great turn with lots of speed if someone leaning on the inside of you is able to knock you off your feet. So what we do when we enter in on that turn, we drop our weight, we turn our ankle at the same time, and we get the outside leg scissored out. So we have a widening of the base of support. Drop the center of gravity, steer with the outside edge, widen your base of support. All three of those have to happen all at the same time. If you decide or forget to do any of those three things, you're gonna put yourself in a situation where inertia takes over and you're not gonna go in the direction you want. So again, drop your center of gravity, access your outside edge for steering, and get that outside leg scissored out to provide for a widening of the base of support and lots of stability. There's some great info that I think if they drop into their game, they're gonna notice some big improvements. Uh, something that I've seen asked online is where the weight should be positioned. Some people say you should lean right into a turn. Other people say you should lean back like a counter lean. So just give the uh, people at home an idea of where their weight should be while they're doing the turn. You wanna be sitting totally on that inside leg. Like when you watch um, a person's skate tracks on the ice, as they finish a turn. You can really see most people have a deeper groove on the outside leg. Mm -hmm. And that's just saying that there, there's not an equal distribution of weight on both, both skates. You want a lot more pressure on that inside leg, really focus, and you wanna be back a little bit on your heels, because centrifugally, it wants to pull you around. If you're on your toes, and your weight is on your toes in a turn, it's pulling your upper body way too far forward, and you end up in a situation where your upper skeleton is way outside your base support, which is gonna throw you off forward and make you really clumsy on trying to come out of the turn. So what we're looking for is most of the weight on the inside leg with some weight also on the outside leg, but not too much on the outside leg. Yeah, you just don't, don't want too deep of a groove on the outside leg, because that's just telling you that you're not planting yourself. And, if, and usually on a curve, someone's leaning on you from the inside, right. so if that leg's not planted, you're easy to push off the puck. So do you have any advice for people who are going to take this onto the ice? Should they start at a certain point and then progress through or just go right into trying all this at once? I'd say fall down as much as possible. I think the key to learning how to turn, because it's so unnatural for us to be on a curve yeah. other than in a vehicle. So you really have to push your limits. You can't be careful. You can't be cautious. Mm -hmm. You just have to throw yourself into it. And the more snow you got on you, the more you know you're trying. Yeah, that is great advice. And I know at the hockey camp, that's something we always say. We want to see them really trying, falling over, finding that failure point, because that's really when the body learns, right? Is right. when you fall over, you're learning. Go out there, don't be afraid to fall. Be prepared to fall over and pay attention to feel. 
like what did it feel like when you were leaning and fell over and you can use that to make corrections and maybe hopefully not fall over the next time. Big thanks to uh, Jim for being on the channel. Thank yeah, you very much. It's always fun, Jared. Thanks for having me. Hey, great to have someone who knows so much about hockey, passing it on to other people at home. Uh, if you guys are looking to pick up the synthetic ice from Hockey Shot, I'll put a link in the video description. And if you want to learn more, we have another video on the way talking about crossovers with Jim Vitale himself. So hit that subscribe button because I do new hockey videos every single week. See you in the next video.